Betsy's welcome back to my channel I know that back to school this year is not necessarily the same as it's been past years so I thought I would give some different advice to kind of cater to what everyone's going through some schools are doing only online some are doing online or in person and some are just doing in person my school personally has switched everyone to starting off the year online so whatever it may be um i hope this video is helpful i have a couple tips to help you with your online learning and to help you stay focused and to get the best grades and results with what we're going through as possible if you're interested in keep watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe The first tip I have is to write down all your assignments. By writing down all of your assignments and their due dates, you'll know what needs to be done and by when. Whenever I'm taking down what assignments I have, I use an app called, I have two apps. The first one I have is the homework app and the second app is called eGenda. And you can also just use the reminders app that come with iPhones and then yeah if you're more of a tech person there are tons and tons of apps on the App Store you can download and they'll help you remember your assignments and you can turn on notifications for those apps so you can be reminded a day before or this first app is called the homework app you have and when they're due this is what the home looks like um, and then it shows you your tasks, and this is me adding a task. I just decided to go with YouTube, so you don't necessarily have to use it for school. You can use it for other life things, too, if you want. And then you choose a category. I haven't done a YouTube one, so I had to add a new category. And then you can choose what color you want that one to appear as, and they have quite a few choices. I chose red because YouTube is red. Then you choose which priority it is, and I needed to upload it quickly, so I chose high priority. And then when it's due, or when you need to do it by, and it can be all day, or you can choose a specific time. And then you just save it, and when you're done, you can press complete by clicking the circle, or you can slide it. And it shows up in the completed column. If that method doesn't work for you, you can style things up a bit and just write it down, or you can put it in a bullet journal and make it look kind of cute and aesthetic, add colors, and I personally, I do, I use an app and I also write things down because I don't want to be on my phone all the time. So if I just want to check something Enjoy this quickly, little I clip of watching me fake write so I can show you me pretending or this is what I would look like I guess if I was taking down notes for what assignments I have due that day and then I looked over because my brother was in the window. And I'm just writing, writing. As you can see on the paper, nothing showed up. Then I close it and I walk away. Tip number two, find a good place to work. Finding a good place to work is very important. Normally, we wouldn't really have a choice as to where we work since we'd be in a classroom at a desk, but that's not exactly the case right now. So just remember, when picking a location, make sure it's somewhere quieter, somewhere you know you can work, and somewhere that has limited distractions. If at all possible, try to avoid working on your bed. Your bed is supposed to be somewhere comfortable and somewhere you can relax. So, if you do work there, you may not be as focused and you may get a little too comfortable. Tip 
tip number three, do not procrastinate. I must admit, I'm quite guilty of this one, but as a recovering procrastination addict, I can tell you from numerous experiences that it's way more stressful than it's worth. I also probably shouldn't say this, but I actually do pretty well with the stress that procrastinating provides. Um, I'm a really good procrastinator, so. Besides the point, Putting things off until the last minute is not a good life habit and it's not something that you should grow accustomed to or you should do. So when things are due, plan them out, write them down, and don't wait until the night before to turn in your homework and to turn in your assignments. It's not good. It may feel good in the moment because you get to sleep in longer, you get to do whatever instead of having to do work. But at the end of the day, just do it. Do when it's a good time. You don't have to do it the instant you get it, but set a time tomorrow night to do it, tomorrow evening, whatever. Do it in the morning so you can have the rest of the day free. Tip number four is to work ahead. Just because something isn't due until the next week or isn't due for a while or maybe even have a couple days to work on it doesn't mean you can't start it early. It's never a bad thing to tackle your tasks right when you get them. Who knows, you may even get a stress and homework free weekend out of it. This tip goes along with procrastinating with instead of putting things up until the last minute, you do them early so that you have a few days free or you get a weekend free and then you're not stressed you know you have everything done you can check it off in your app or in your bullet journal and you can just feel productive the fifth and final tip I have is to learn ahead this is kind of an extension on tip number four I know online learning is different and it can be kind of difficult for some a lot of people do better with in-person teaching and they can ask questions whenever they want and there's also more time to learn content in a day or during a class. So if you're one of those people, this tip is going to be very useful for you. Instead of hopping on the struggle bus of trying to catch up on material during a shortened class time, take things into your own hands. One of the main subjects I like to learn ahead in is math. I'm taking advanced math this year, which isn't something I've done, so instead of scrambling around when school finally starts up, I use Khan Academy to help me learn things that I would have learned in regular algebra and so that I know what I'm doing when I get to Algebra 1 honors. If you struggle with math too, or not necessarily struggle, but if you want to be slightly ahead of the learning curve and you you don't even have to learn it completely you can just learn the basics of something and then when you get to class you can ask questions on whatever it is that you don't understand still or wasn't clear and there are other apps you can use also and Khan Academy is great because it takes you step by step and it has videos and it also has questions that you answer and it has other subjects so it has history I think there are probably a few better apps for English or science, but I would highly recommend it if you're looking for something for math and history or anything. In Here's the app I use for math, and it's good for history and science too. It's called Khan Academy. Um, this is just the unit I'm working on. This is what it, the units look like. They have checkpoints, and they have video lessons, and then this is what one of the questions looks like. And if you're stuck, you can use a hint, and the hint explains it, so it doesn't just give you the answer. These are the different categories, and they have grades from really young to high school, and they also have career things. But this is what the science section looks like, and yeah. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. I hope these five tips for online school learning and productivity helped you and I wish you all the best with your school years. 
and whatever grade you may be in, I hope it goes well. I hope your classes go well and that you still get to have fun. And let's hope that eventually we get to go back this year because this is my first year. It's supposed to be my first year of high school. It's gonna be freshman, but I had big plans too. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notification bell so you can get notified when I upload my next video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.